It's been almost 40 years since the Shockers took the field, so today I've brought them back in NCAA football, and I have to build them up from scratch as there currently isn't a single player on the roster. That's going to make it very difficult to complete these six challenges by the end of the video, which I have to do, and if I fail to complete any of them, I have to buy a jersey for a random commenter on this video. Now to make the rebuild even harder, I can only play three regular season games a year, and I better put together a good recruiting class because these will be the only players that will be on our team. I can't really be picky because we need every player we we can get, but Derek Williams is really weird. There's a deal breaker causing him not to want to come to the school, and it's playing time, which will not be an issue. Going into next season, we literally have zero players that are going to be on the team, so I'm not quite sure what's repelling him, but I'm just going to continue to search for gyms as I'm finding quite a few. Well, after getting super lucky and finding multiple gyms in these two receivers and putting together a pretty solid recruiting board all around, if we can get all of these guys, I think we'll be decent next year. And by decent, I just mean a team that can win a game or two. By mid-season, I'm hoping we've at least landed our first recruit and it's time for the moment of truth. I'm just going to scroll down and there he is. Quarterback Leo Daughtry is the first player to go ahead and commit to the program and by week 10 I'm really starting to fill out some of the positions that need to be filled next year as we have 10 players that are committed to the program and some of them are really good. For example, kicker Justin Adams will probably play as both a kicker and a punter for us. In junior Juco, Steven Rankin has a stunning 94 speed. We even got 4 star 80 overall Nate Tolbert and I'd love to pair him with Todd Pino but LSU jumped into the race and I think we're going to lose out on him. Also, we're in the American Conference to start this rebuild, but if we can win a conference championship, that's how we get invited into the Big 12 to complete that challenge. With a few weeks left in the regular season, I've signed even more people, getting our total up to 18, but the name that we really want to bring to the program is Todd Pino and LSU is getting very close. By week 15, they finally took a lead, but they didn't get him to commit, so fortunately for us, we're going into one final recruiting period in the offseason and we have a chance to get him if we just load up points on him. I'm hoping 6,000 is enough to get the 6-4 free. And now it's time for the moment of truth where we find out that we did get him. Now that is great news and we did get the 29th best recruiting class in the country. But even though I feel like it is a really good one, there's only 21 players in here. So our team's going to be very, very tiny. We're going to have a lot of guys playing on both sides of the ball. And look at that. We got Derek Williams. Evidently, he realized he would get playing time here and he's going to be our starting strong safety. Now I'm not going to lie. This team is pretty rough. I have done the best that I can to try to move guys around and get them in the position they need to succeed, but there's a lot of positions where we literally just have nobody that can fill in that role. So there will be a lot of walk-ons coming in, but you're getting a first look at all of the players we've recruited, and this is the start of the Wichita State football program, so we're going to see how they end up doing. With the 31 additional walk-ons, the team is not looking good, but at least it is full of players. And going into season number two, we need to recruit really well because we're a 63 overall. It is not going to be easy to complete this rebuild, but if we can win one of our first games, that would be huge, and welcome to our state. Stadium. For some reason, whoever created this custom team has put Wichita State inside a dome and it is raining in here. I'm not quite sure how that's possible, but what's important is we're able to get a win with this terrible team. And I heavily respect the banners this guy's put up, including this one that says, Always Remember. Back in 1970, when Wichita State had a football program, there was a huge plane crash where unfortunately 31 players passed away. And that's just a really tragic moment, so I'm glad that they put something in the game to represent that. And I have a feeling that's one of the reasons they don't have a football program today but I'm not entirely sure, so don't quote me on that. Anyways, that was just a sad thing I had to mention, but let's get the tempo going back up, get into a good mood. We're about to score our first touchdown, and of course, it had to be Todd Pino. The fact that that 6'4 freak ended up wanting to play here is huge for us, and I'm glad we have him because this has already been extremely difficult. He's one of the few very bright spots on our team, and so is our kicker who has a very good leg. I'm honestly surprised we're still in this game with so many walk-ons out there on the field, but Missouri State is struggling, and midway through the third quarter, we should be able to take a lead on this possession. I'm going to throw it to Murphy in the flat and he's going to dive in. I can't believe the freshman made that play, but he was an athlete. I moved the tight end with 90 speed and he is definitely going to be a key player during this rebuild. Despite our starting quarterback getting hurt for the rest of the game, with a minute and a half left, we've maintained our lead and the throw is going to be up, but he's going to be out of bounds. The refs aren't even reviewing it, so we are going to escape with what might be our only win this year and what a start that is to season number two. One thing you've probably noticed early on is I am going after a lot of different Juco players because they're higher over overalls, and that means they might only be around for two years instead of four, but I feel like that's very important for building up a good program, because it's going to take us a while to get good, and if we can stay competitive, that'll be important. Like against Kansas State, we just got blown out, and that's how most of the next few seasons will go, but I also want to be able to stay competitive. Now, I do find it interesting that this entire recruiting class we're getting almost no contest on on any of the players we're going after, which is great because we've already been able to land a few big guys, but I'm also kind of confused how that's the case, because we have not won a game in a very long time. By 
by week nine, we were sitting at the bottom of our division, but we're about to play a very important game. We've traveled to play at Tulsa, our rivals, and beating them is one of the six challenges in this video, so I am hoping we can pull it off. That was a huge pick to start us out, and I can't believe freshman BJ Green came down with that because he has had a major impact on this game already. Leo Daughtery has also come out and done a fantastic job, so I'm hoping we can hold on to our lead for as long as possible. Unfortunately, our success did not last for as long as I was hoping, as we've given up 17 straight to Tulsa, but the reason that's happened has not been a defensive issue, but an offensive issue. We have struggled to get down the field and score points all day, and I feel like our offense has done a decent job for the amount of walk-ons we have, but it won't be enough. Hopefully, one year we'll be able to beat our rivals, but at least for now, that's just a pipe dream. On the bright side, though, we are still bringing in talent, and there are a lot of guys that aren't JUCOs that'll be here for four years, so that's good, and I do have to say, I am sick of fighting with LSU for wide receivers. I am surprised that we beat Rice, but I'll take it because over half our roster was walk-ons and we went 2-10. and 10. Now, a lot of those results were pretty rough, but our quarterback did throw for more interceptions than touchdowns, and he rushed for more scores than our starting halfback. Our best players were probably Todd Pino and Nate Tolbert, and I can't wait to see how well they develop. One thing I did find surprising is nobody ever wanted to transfer into our program, but I recruited another top 20 recruiting class, so I'm not very worried about it. I mean, you will be able to notice that a lot of our top guys are JUCOs, but that's okay because they're going to be able to make an immediate impact, and I wasn't planning on replacing Leo Daughtery already, but I recruited an amazing athlete. Even after going through off-season training, he's like seven overalls higher, so he's going to end up starting at quarterback for us, and after making sure he's no longer wearing gloves, I can't wait to see what John Johnston can do. Even with him, we are projected to stink, but we jumped from a 63 overall team to a 77 overall, so I don't care. At the end of the day, I'm still focused on recruiting mainly as I got to make sure the team we're fielding is good enough to get wins, and so I'm expecting us to have another rough season, but I'm surprised we only lost by five there. On the road at Kansas State, who is a good team, should have been a blowout, but maybe we're a little better than I think, and I think I'm going to retract that statement almost immediately. We are 0-4, so I am going to go into this Missouri State game, and hopefully we can shock them. With the much better team and not having to start any walk-ons, this one should be a breeze compared to our matchup from last season, and John Johnson's going to roll out and already start with a dot. However, I am embarrassed to say it looks like we are about to go down unless we can get a sack, and getting a stop here on the goal line would be absolutely massive, but we can't do it. I have no idea how they were able to get behind our defense, but we have an offensive line this year, so even though we are struggling a little bit on offense, we are going to go into the half with a lead. Having Justin Adams as our kicker has been massive as he can hit from about anywhere, and the fact that he can consistently drill from about 50 is very helpful. With his leg, I feel like we are in a decent position, but Missouri State just won't go away as they've worked it all the way down the field. Thankfully though, we have forced them to a fourth and goal, and we are going to be able to get the stop, I think? No. He actually was able to fight into the end zone right there. And if we blow this 14-point lead, I'm gonna lose my mind. At least we recovered the onside kick. And from there, we've gotten it to a third and five where we are going to pick it up and end the game. It feels good to get our first win of the season. And surely we can take down winless UTSA, right? Let's go ahead and sim it. And of course we don't. Well, we might just be the worst team in the division again, but I think this is the year we take down Tulsa. We have to play well as multiple big recruits are visiting. And of course, it's raining in the dome again. It doesn't really make much sense, but if we beat our rivals, I'm not going to care. And it has been a very low scoring couple of quarters, but eventually we're going to figure it out. Well, at least I thought we would, but we still have 10 points with five minutes left and our tight end is wide open. I got to throw it to him. And I'll be looking for Ben Murphy again on this play, which he's not going to catch. It probably would have been smarter to just hand it off, but that didn't work either. And we just fumbled the ball. You've got to be kidding me. Well, maybe one year we'll beat Tulsa, but it's not this year. And we still haven't completed a single video challenge. At least we're getting a lot of different types of players to commit to the school. And it's been a very very challenging rebuild, but I think I've done a very good job with recruiting this far into it. Time will tell if we're ever able to turn it around and look at that. We beat North Texas, but at the end of the day, we finished two and 10 again. I am going to cap this rebuild at eight seasons and we're already through three. So I have five more to complete all six of those challenges or else I'm giving away a jersey. While looking at the season stats, I noticed that we did have some injury issues. And because of that, nobody had any totals that were very impressive besides Todd Pino. Unfortunately, some of the JUCOs I recruited are already graduating and we're losing BJ Green to the transfer program portal. He had the first interception in this dynasty's history for us, but I really don't care because after putting in a ton of work, I signed the number three recruiting class with Wichita State. That knocks off the first of six challenges in this video, and I know that we haven't had any success yet, but I feel like it has to be coming. Going into season four of eight, we're sitting at an 83 overall, and due to that, we should be able to sim games like against Missouri State, which we're going to win. I think this could be a year where we make a bowl game, but we have to get through our first two games against the Kansas teams, and unfortunately, we lost to the Wildcats 
Wildcats and we're also going to lose to the Jayhawks. Maybe one year we'll beat them, but now we're playing a winless East Carolina at home. I'm expecting a win, which we don't get. And I'm starting to wonder if we're ever going to turn it around as we just lost to FAU by a ton as well. I hate to say it, but this looks like it's going to be a repeat of the past couple of years as we lose to UTSA. And it's no wonder that we're struggling as we're dealing with many different injuries. The only thing that could really turn around our season would be a win against our rivals. And you best believe I'm playing the game with hardly anybody in attendance. We're both one in five, meaning we're equally as bad. And that does give me a little bit of hope. I feel like we have enough talent to make something happen. And how on earth did Chris Marshall just get wide open? I'm going to be able to run with this and hopefully we're going to get down inside the 10, putting us in a fantastic position to end the first quarter, though we are losing the football here. And you've got to be kidding me. There's no way that they are going to pick it up with this slow fat dude and take it back to the house. At least we are going to tackle him, but that was not the right ending to the quarter. Fortunately, I don't think that's going to be the thing that makes us lose, as even though it was a very frustrating play, we're not out of it. In fact, we've gotten almost three times as many first downs as Tulsa has in the entire game, so although it might seem close, it has been pretty lopsided. With about four minutes left, they are on a third and ten, and we are going to get the interception. So even though it was close for a while, we're going to beat our rivals, and maybe this is what turns around the rebuild. That'll knock off the second challenge of the video, and the next thing we have to do is try to win the American. Normally, I'd just sim to the end of the year by now, but this upcoming game is extremely important. 14 different players are coming in to visit our campus, and we're hosting one of the best teams in the conference. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to take them down, but I'm going to give it my best shot as Tolbert gets open. And honestly, this has been the best the offense has played in this dynasty. We have scored on every single offensive possession so far, which is wild to say. And John Johnston has just had a really good game as he finds another receiver. He makes him miss, and Chris Marshall is that guy. It feels like Tulane has fallen off. And what an amazing performance from John Johnson. Because of him, we landed 11 different prospects in just one week. And I was hoping that would be what turned around our season, but it wasn't as we lost three of our last four, finishing four and eight. I am a little surprised by how bad of a year John Johnson had, but he also rushed for 500 yards, so it's really hard to judge how good he is. What I do know though is that we're only losing five players once again, and I brought in 19 guys to replace them, so it honestly doesn't even feel like we're losing anybody. Their overalls might not be as high right now, but as they develop, they're going to turn into even better players like Todd Pino being a 94 overall. But he's also a part of our highest overall team yet, and I'm ready to finally take down one of these other teams in Kansas. It's probably the fact that we have an insane receiving core, but honestly, today, it has not been hard to move the ball. If I wouldn't have thrown a few goal line picks, we would be up by a lot more, but because of some unlucky things, we're only going to go up by 10. It wasn't a perfect first half, but I will take it, and I don't know why I'm coming out in goal line here on a long third and four, but I'm going for the first, and not only did we not get it, but Matt Kelly is hurt. Backup halfback Thomas Cooley is going to need to step up for us, and he is going to get enough on this play, but I definitely need to change his number because he should not be number 40. Whenever you get this far into a dynasty, the computer numbers get really weird. And I'd love to say that we're going to be able to hold on to our lead, but Kansas State is trying their hardest to come back and that throw is out of the park. It did bring my attention though to how unique of a stadium Kansas State has, especially behind this end zone. And the fact that I know they're going to capture it like that for the new game makes me so excited. There have been some issues with players trying to get more than the $500, but I don't think it'll end up turning into anything. And at the end of the day, if the new NCAA football game has to come with generic players, it won't be the end of the world. Someone will end up making a custom roster within the first week of release, and I'm just excited to see what EA is able to come up with. We're getting stops here. So as I've rambled on, we've gotten them to a fourth and goal, and that is going to be game. We were finally able to take down the Wildcats, and I'm hoping we can carry that momentum into our game against Kansas, which we are able to do. Now I'm feeling extremely well about this season. How on earth did we just lose to FAU? Everything was going so well, and then we just fumbled that game away for no reason. So I'm glad we bounced back against East Carolina and at Memphis. Of course, we also beat Missouri State, and 5-1 and one at this point in the year is pretty good, but what'll make or break our season is going against Tulane. Last year, we did end up embarrassing them, but evidently they took that to heart as we are already starting out down 14-0. to On top of that, I think the green wave paid off the refs, and it is not looking like it's going to be easy for us today. They're sending the blitz, though, so we're going to throw it up to our big receiver, and he gets in. Nate Tolbert made a great play there, but we haven't been able to stop this green wave offense. If we don't start scoring soon, then we're in a lot of trouble, and out of frustration, I have hurried it up on fourth down, but we are going to have somebody open, and this is a huge pickup. If we didn't get that there, you could say it would have been game for us, but instead, we're getting the ball back before the half, and I know there's not much time left, but I'm going to go for the field goal anyway, and that's a terrible throw. For a game that once seemed like it was over, we are going to get it back within seven points, and I know Tulane has to be feeling the pressure right now, but we're going to give up a huge play, and they just keep scoring, so I'm not sure if we're able to keep up. This is a big fourth and five that we are fortunately able to pick up, but 
after getting in a long third and 22, I think we're about done, except we're not. Pino makes the play, and the senior wide receiver just came up very big time for us. Kelly is going to fight multiple people off, though, and he's going to break free to dive in. And what a sequence to turn this game around. If we're able to find the end zone again, I think I have to go for the two-point conversion. And why did he have that much time in the pocket? There's no way they pick up this third and long. It might not be the ideal position, but we do have the ball back, and look at our wide open receiver. Pino is killing it recently, and the most important game in this rebuild so far is coming down to the wire. That was a massive fourth and one we just converted, and they press Nate Tolbert, which was not smart. The difficult part is going for two, though, and the running back is wide open. Unfortunately, that's not going to matter, as Tulane has worked it all the way down the field, but we've gotten some stops, making this a very big third and three, which they're going to get in on. I can't believe I'm saying this, but it might have been a dumb decision to go for it, and actually, no, it wasn't. Because we went for it and got it, it forced them to go for two there, and since they didn't pick it up, we can win with a touchdown. So I need to calm down, make the right read, and they send a blitz there, but I don't think it's going to work as they pressed Pino, who is going to go all the way down inside the 20. I don't understand why they'd press Todd as he's had a fantastic game, but we're in a very good position with about 25 seconds left. I'm going to go with another run with Kelly, and he's going to get down at the one. I took off a little bit of clock, and we're going to hand it off again to take the lead, and this could end up being the most important comeback in this rebuild. It'll just depend if we make the American Conference Championship or not. And although Rice is a 2-4 and four team, they're also 84 overall, so I'm nervous about this one, but we get the win. And since it was visit week, that helped us out a ton. This recruiting class has a lot of really good players in it, but it was very targeted, so it's not very deep, and there's not going to be a ton of prospects. What's important, though, is we keep winning, and I'm going to sim to the UTSA game, which is not good for us. North Texas is a 72 overall, but they were just able to upset us. And that means if we lose one more time, we're probably not going to make the American Conference Championship. At least we took down SMU. But now I have to decide if I want to jump into the Tulsa game or the UTSA one. I might regret this decision, but I think our rivals have a better chance against us and we did get the win. Also, because we hold the tiebreakers over Tulane and Rice, I don't even have to jump into our rivalry one as we've clinched a spot in the conference championship. Now, we are going to lose by 25, which was very alarming, but we still made it here. And our opponent is going to be USF. Since I'm living in Tampa now, I should probably make it out to Raymond James Stadium for at least a game or two this season. But at least in the video game, nobody should be rooting for USF as we need to get this win for this rebuild. I know I haven't done a great job at knocking off challenges, but this would complete another one. And it would also get us an invite into the Big 12. I told you all how important it was that we got that result against Tulane, and it turns out I was right. But we still have to make sure that we take care of business in this one. Going into the half, it's 17 to 7. And the reason we are doing so well is all because of our defense. We were able to hold them to seven points for the longest time, but now their offense is starting to come alive. And this is a massive third and five, which we're going to give up. The refs are reviewing it though. So maybe they'll get cheated out of a touchdown. It looks like his foot was in and I don't see how they could overturn it, which they don't. A three point lead with the ball isn't one of the worst positions to be in, but we cannot afford to have a three and out here. And thank goodness we're not going to. They've gone ahead and used their timeouts to do their best at trying to stop the clock, but I don't think they're going to be able to because we've gotten it to a third and one, which we're going to be able to pick up. That was an extremely, extremely close call. But after a lot of years of struggle, we have won the American and that means we have earned our spot in the Big 12 Conference. With that result, the next task we're going to have is winning the Big 12. And I know I should probably care about our bowl game since it's against my favorite team, but I'm ready to go ahead and get into next season. So we're going to sim it and we're going to get the win anyway. That season ended up being John Johnson's prove it year as he threw for 34 touchdowns. And he was also our leading rusher, which is incredible. The only bad news is Todd Pino and Nate Tolbert are going to graduate. And this is going to be a sad goodbye to the final players that were a part of that first recruiting class. We finally produced an NFL talent in Todd Pino though. And even though I only focused in on getting 16 high caliber recruits, we finished with the number two recruiting class in the country. I wasn't expecting that, but you won't see me complaining. And this 66 overall athletes actually a 78 overall wide receiver. Every so often you can find some amazing gyms in NCAA football like that and take a look at these off season recruiting results. I don't know about you all, but I'm stoked to see how we do in the big 12. And as a 93 overall team, we're actually projected to finish third in our division. Senior quarterback, John, John Johnson is even on the Heisman watch, and we're set to have a really good year opening it up against our rivals Tulsa, who we beat by 20. The next week, we're hosting TCU, and I am going to sim it, but I'm going to jump into the next one against Houston, and a win here would put us on pace for a great year. On an early third and four, it looks like they're going with the quarterback run that we're going to stop, and even with the new starting wide receivers, we're moving the ball very well. I think the offense could have gotten even better, and I'm hoping we can get six on this drive as well. There's nobody open in the end zone, so I'm going to have to take off with Johnson, who is going to dive in. Houston doesn't seem to to want to give up very easily though as they continue to move the ball down the field and they're going for it on fourth and one but it's not going to work. We deserve to get a stop there and now we have a chance to bomb them if
if Johnson can make the throw. It is a little bit underthrown, so we're not going to be able to go for six, which should be okay because a few plays later, we're going to go for the end zone, and that is an interception. Up to this point, I'd actually been doing really well in this video, but we're going to force a fumble. And even though we didn't end up recovering it, we're still getting the ball back in a pretty good position. So it's no surprise we're going into the half up 14. I think Houston is a good team, but they just weren't good enough to beat us. And in the end, it wasn't really much of a contest. Taking a closer look at the schedule, I think the last two I'll jump into will be Kansas State and Iowa State. And we went ahead and beat Deion Sanders' team, along with hopefully taking down the Mountaineers, which we do. That's enough to get us ranked for the first time coming in at number 14. But John Johnson has fallen out of the Heisman race. We need him to finish in the top five to complete the finalist challenge. And after taking a closer look at those conference standings, I am going to sim this one because it's at home and play next week. But that was a bad decision. We took our first conference loss, so we cannot lose again. And I'm just glad we didn't fall very far down in the AP poll. Beating Iowa State on the road will not be easy though. And I think we're going to have a touchdown on this play, which we do, but the throw isn't going to get off. That should have been six, but instead we're going to be forced to settle for three. And I'm assuming we're going to go into the half losing, but we might have a touchdown here if this is a good enough throw and it's picked off instead. Well, that was not an ideal ending to the first half, but there's still plenty of time left. And on this play, they sent way too many people at us. They simply made it too easy there. And now we're going to get into the end zone. And with three minutes left, we do find ourselves down by four, but we should be able to get in here. We're already on the five yard line. And I don't know why I'm passing the ball because I should have just ran it in. That's going to go ahead and put us up by three points again. And I know this is a minor detail that has nothing to do with the game, but Iowa State has a sick complex behind their end zone. The more I play through these long dynasties, the more I'm starting to appreciate the details. And this is a massive fourth and six where they have a couple slants going over the middle and my user might be the worst in the world. Due to it being undisputably awful, we're probably going to see overtime unless we can make a play here. But somehow this ball missed our cornerback's hands. I thought well, that was game, but instead they're going to get in. And now we have 43 seconds to score a touchdown, which won't be easy with our offensive line collapsing like that. We're in a position now where we almost just have to throw it up and hope for a prayer, which I'm going to do. And how on earth has number 12 beat the defense? He's going to get in. Fred Brown somehow just toasted all of them. And I don't know how he did it, but I am not going to complain because it all comes down to one last throw, which we're going to intercept. And you know what? What if we could return this for a touchdown just to rub it in? We did not deserve to win this game in the slightest, but you know what? We're improving to six and one. And I'm glad that I saved one final game to jump into. It's going to be a rain game in Kansas, but I'm hoping that we can persevere through that and get the win. Oh, the ball is out. Someone bounce on top of it. There we go. That was a huge turnover. The rain caused it and their defense has been clamped so far as I haven't completed a single pass, but I have a feeling this is going to be a defensive game. I'd say I was kind of right about that as approaching halftime, they've only scored 10 points on us, but we're going to need to catch a lucky break at some point, And this might be the drive that does it. If we could just get into the end zone before the end of the half, we'd have a four point lead. But because my pocket awareness is literally zero, I think we're going to end up having to take a field goal and it's going to be tied up 10 to 10 in this rainy battle. The weather's just annoying because it is favoring their style of play as they like to run the ball. And on paper, we're certainly the better team, but that only means so much if you can't stop them. Another third and 10 for us now, this time it is cover two. So I'm going to go for the receiver out on the side and he drops it. That is like the 10th time one of the receivers can't hold on to it. And I am starting to get very fed up with this, but I am going to go with the lateral on this kick return and then the juke move. I wish we could have broke free there. As you all can tell, I am trying my hardest, but there's only so much I can do when the computer decides that I'm not going to hold on to something. And at this point, I have practically given up because I've struggled to move the ball all day, but the running back is wide open and he drops it. That is so frustrating. But if we can end this drive with points, it really won't matter. And this third and 15 is extremely important, which we're going to stop. Despite getting super unlucky, we actually have a chance to take a lead on this drive. And I'm going to go for the running back here, which is also dropped. And I've only shown you all about half of the ones I've experienced. So you can only imagine how bad this has been. I just threw an interception, which is a very bad thing. And it's safe to say I've lost my mind. I allowed my frustration to get the best of me. And I almost had an interception there. But instead, they're going to pick up the first down on the halfback screen. And I just wasn't quick enough to get there in time. We're going to lose our second game of the season. And since I've jumped into the three that I can play, I have to sim the rest of the year. We ended up losing to BYU as well. And it turns out the one game that I really should have jumped into was the Kansas State one. I'm going to blame John Johnson as he regressed into his senior season, and we're going to be losing him along with halfback Matt Kelly, who never went for over a thousand rushing yards. Even senior Kevin Green won't be on the team next year. And of course, with those season stats, we did not have a Heisman finalist. Instead, we made the cheese it Bowl against Pitt. And I promise you all, I do not care what the result of this is. We're going to end up losing it anyway, which honestly doesn't bug me. But what does is we are losing one of the best quarterbacks in school history and some of the best
best players. It's crazy to look at, but all of those talented prospects that I recruited so long ago are all graduating, and I'm not sure what we're going to be left with going into next year. Also, for like the seventh season in a row, nobody has transferred in. So throughout this entire video, I've had to depend only on recruiting classes, which have thank goodness turned out to be very, very good. In fact, I'm not sure if we had one that was worse than being in the top 20. And even though I thought this team was going to be in shambles, it ended up turning out to be just fine. I only have two seasons left to complete all three of these challenges though. And to my surprise, we're projected to finish first in our division. We're also projected to be the 15th best team in the country with a 95 overall team. And if we lose any of these first few games, I'm going to be incredibly upset. It looks like we're going to take care of business though. And we even snuck by UCF with a nine point win. Last year, we jumped into the Houston game because they were undefeated, but they've already lost one this year. So I felt comfortable simming it. And now we're going to have our first challenge as Colorado is undefeated at 4-0. I'm hoping that we're able to run away with this one, but with new starting quarterback Richard Bennett, you really have no clue how this one is going to go. He's a junior, so he should have the experience needed to get us the win today, but midway through the third quarter, we are in a tie game, so I might be wrong about that. I do not like being in a fourth down situation, but we're going to go ahead, pick it up with Seymour, and at some point, we got to start dominating offensively because I know they're undefeated, but we should not be in a close game here. My goal is to win a championship with Wichita State this year, so that's why it cannot be a contest right now. And after a few dots, I feel like we are starting to figure it out. We're going to lock them up on this third down, forcing them to punt us the ball back. And in the end, we were just too much for Deion Sanders' team to handle. That result will actually get us ranked in the top five, and halfback Derek Brown is on the Heisman watch list. He's only even playing because Thomas Cooley is injured, but we need him to finish as a finalist, so we're going to go ahead and make him the permanent starter. Our next game is at 1-3 and three West Virginia, so I feel very comfortable just simming it. And now I'm playing the game I should have gone into last year. The Wildcats are on a two-game losing streak, so they're going to be looking to bounce back today. And unfortunately, so far, it looks like that is going to be the case. They're playing way better than a 3-2 and two team. And after recovering a fumble on the kickoff, we're going to go down 17-0. This time, I'm not going to sim it because evidently I can't do that. I don't want to lose the ball again. And Robertson's getting a nice little return here. Kind of sad that up to this point, our offense has just been a failure. So I'm going to get it going. And I promise you, I'm going to be making all of the right reads. Kansas State honestly made this drive way too easy. But the issue in the third quarter has just been getting defensive stops, which might come on this possession. That was a great play to force the sack, and now on a third and long, they're going to need to throw it right to me. We're going to hopefully get a pick six here with Peterson. That would be incredible. Is he fast enough? No, he is not. Either way, though, we can take a lead on this possession and look at Brown go. He is wide open, and look how quick he is. He's going to get out, and he's going to get all the way down into the end zone. What a turnaround we just had. At one point, we were trailing by 17, and now we have a lead with another sack, but then my wonderful game crashed. After going through all the frustrating steps it took to get this game back to the way it was, we have the ball. And honestly, I should probably be trying to run out the rest of the clock. If Derek Brown has any speed, he might be able to go all the way here. And as long as we get a touchdown on this drive, we should be fine. But our running back drops it. As one of the people in the Heisman race, you cannot make plays like that. And I'm probably going to regret this, but I'm going to go back to him on third and 19, which is a great decision. Derek Brown makes the catch that we needed. And on third and six, I have a lot of players manned up. I think we're going to get the stop. Peterson's going to get the interception. And because of how on point my user has been, been today, I've been able to run down the clock and secure the win. I mean, technically it isn't over as Kansas State could still make a miracle last second comeback, but they would need a lot to go right for them. And that's a draw. For the first time in this rebuild, the computer got the bad luck I've been experiencing and I'll happily take improving to 6-0. That only leaves us with one more game that we can jump into though. And Iowa State is undefeated in conference play, but I feel like I need to sim this one, which we're thankfully going to win. Now, originally I was worried about Kansas, but they're actually three and four. So this was an easy decision. And these scores, have been close, but I feel like our momentum will carry us through the rest of the season now, which seems to be the case as we dominate BYU. And our last game is against Cincinnati, which I probably should jump into, but we're going to win anyway. That's going to make us the number one team in the country. And obviously we're going to make the big 12 conference championship. It all comes down to us versus Baylor. And of course we're hosting it inside our dome where it's raining. I don't understand how this keeps happening, but if we get the win, I'm not really going to care. And there's no way they completed that pass. I'm telling you all the computer finds new ways to cheat in every single game, but their kicker did not have the leg for that kick. And I'm going to punish them for that as we should be able to get onto the board first here. If we're able to get off to a good start, we might never look back. And that hit better not stop Derek Brown from getting in. He's still in the Heisman race. So I have to focus on making sure that he's getting a lot of touches. And that is what I'm going to be doing today with this huge throw to him where he's going to break free and get in. Our only real issue is Baylor continues to stay in it and holding them to just three there is massive. That's going to give us an opportunity to get onto the board before the half and I have way too much time in the pocket to find a wide open Kemp for a huge
huge gain. So I think we know how this drive is going to end and look at our running back wide open. He has already scored four touchdowns and at this point I can't see us blowing this lead. We've done such a good job on defense and that should have been a stop there but even though it wasn't I'm not worried because we still have a two possession lead and maybe I should be a little concerned. Evidently I can't run around slinging it like I have a Patrick Mahomes but we do get a sack and after realizing earlier that their kicker cannot hit it from this far they went for it but that ended up being a terrible decision. Now I'm able to just try and run down as much clock as possible and in the end the Bears tried their best but they can't do anything. Two years into joining the Big 12 we've won a conference championship and hopefully that's enough to get Derek Brown the Heisman. There's the trophy that we're going to be taking back home to Wichita and now it's time for the moment of truth where we find out we didn't get the Heisman. I did end up winning coach of the year though and even though Derek Brown didn't win it we still knocked off these two challenges. All that's left is us playing in the college football playoffs and if it goes our way we'll knock off the final challenge by winning a national championship. One thing that's for sure is we were clearly dominant when we ran the ball this year and throughout this entire dynasty we didn't ever have any great receivers. That's kind of odd but if we win our game the championship will be against Ole Miss and I am nervous going into this game. We have made it all this way with a small school and on this first play we should have had an interception there but they're somehow getting the catch and he might be able to go all the way. If we can make a tackle here that'd be huge because we might have just saved ourselves there. It could have been a little bit of damage control as holding them the three would be nowhere near as bad but that is not going to happen. I'm not thrilled with how that went but it's going to be a long game and this should be a touchdown but it's underthrown so Florida State is going to get a stop. I'm going to do my best to stay positive though because that's how we're going to end up having success and on their second drive they're only going to get a field goal. I feel like we'll be able to get seven in response and what on earth is going on? Get up. No, get out of the end zone. How on earth is this happening to us? I try to keep telling you all EA does stuff to make it so you lose when it shouldn't happen but we're going to bomb them anyway and Kemp apparently has speed like that. I had no idea he was able to be this quick but we made up for that fumble immediately. Now we have them on a third and 15 and this should be the first time we get a stop on them. They're throwing it deep and Peterson knocks it down. We have had a perfect game on offense so far and hopefully that can continue as that is a dot putting us up 21 to 10. I feel like I have definitely figured out a good system to use with this team as we're going to keep getting stops and I'm hoping their kicker doesn't have the leg for this field goal but he does. Ideally if we could finish up this first half with a touchdown that would be perfect for us but I'm not sure if it's going to happen. I just chucked it because no one else was open and Seymour is quick enough as well. Even on Heisman our guys are toasting these corners which is awesome to watch and I guess it makes sense since some of them have like 96 speed. We are going to get in a little faster than I would have liked but it ended up working out for us and I feel like we're so close to just running away with it. We still haven't been stopped on offense and nearing the end of the third quarter we're probably going to get in again so I respect Florida State for trying but it's going to be a long bus ride home. If you want to see the play that ended up finishing it off for them this would be it or not they're going to pick it off. I might have gotten a little bit cocky there but at the end of the day as long as we win I really don't care. They're still trailing by 16 with about three minutes left and on this two-point conversion they have way too much time in the pocket. I hope that we are not in the process of choking here at least we're going to hold on to the onside kick and I'm pretty sure that one or two first downs will pretty much do it. They're already calling timeouts and it's just not going to matter and I might be a scumbag for this but I'm just going to run up the score because I can. We have made it to the national championship game and hopefully we can go out and beat Ole Miss. It's been a very long rebuild but we have made it all the way and I'm going into this game with a very aggressive mindset. For example it might be fourth and two but I don't care as I'm going to go for it anyway and that was the right decision as we're going to break free with Kemp and he's going to be able to take this one to the house. I cannot believe that worked that well for us. But that's exactly why I want to be aggressive. On paper Ole Miss's team is slightly better so we have to do stuff like that. And after that huge play I'm a little surprised that they just pressed us but Seymour just toasted them so I'm going to loft the ball up to him. He's going to catch it and he isn't going to be able to go all the way himself but he's gotten us deep inside the red zone so we should be able to punch it in with Brown. Another thing I love to do down here is just jump in with the quarterback. So far things are looking good for us but that could all change very quickly. The only thing that can make up for bad sacks like that is when they press and they have left Seymour open over the top for the second time. There was no reason for them to bring their safeties that far down on second and 19 but they did it anyways and we just fumbled the ball into the end zone. That should have been a touchdown. I'm not happy with how that went so I am going to challenge it and it says it's not available. It turns out it shouldn't have been as the ball came loose way too early on and I was honestly just salty so I'm just going to start blitzing. It looks like Ole Miss is going to do the same thing to us but they left Brown wide open over the top and I am going to see those things. I have great eyes some of the time not often but I stare down one route and when that one happens to be the one that gets open I'm going to be able to make gains for huge plays like that past one. Ole Miss is threatening to get back into the end zone here though so if we could hold them to three that would be a massive statement for us and thankfully that's what we're going to be able to do. I'm starting to feel myself as we have 
have done a great job, and Brant made a sick Duke move there as he's going to break free. If he could go all the way, that'd be amazing. He did miss one tackle, and I think he is going to do it. 28 to 10 already. Ole Miss is going to try to end the half with a field goal, but that is going to be a little bit off, and I cannot believe how well we are playing right now. Boys, I'm not going to lie. I think Ole Miss is about to be put out of reach, and the reason it's this bad is single-handedly because of how bad their defense has been. They scored 31 points, but that's not going to be enough to take down the Shockers in the championship, and I'm thrilled to say that I was able to complete all six of the video challenges, winning a national championship at Wichita State in just seven seasons. Make sure to let me know which team to rebuild next, and make sure to leave some challenges along with that as well.